Today, we are doing our coin analysis on an ICO that just started today, RxEO. Hopefully I said that right. <laughs> this one just got brought to my attention not too long ago and I wanna try to cover as many ICOs as possible. Before we begin though, I wanna remind you that ICOs are risky, so don't forget to do your own research. And the team at RxEO has reached out to me to do a sponsored review. So, and I have reserved the right to be as honest and objective as possible for all of you. Again, remember, this is just a coin analysis. I'm not trying to show you, tell you to buy this. I just want to bring you the facts, let you know what it is. Let's get started. Hey there, YouTube, and welcome to Altcoin Picks. Again, this is a coin analysis of the upcoming ICO, RxSeal. I am super excited to show you. These are our completed ICOs. I always like to start my videos, or I will start my videos with this, so we can go through this and see how we're doing. With our upcoming ICOs, we have only four on there, but you can see the black are the ones we have marked out that we are completing right now. The scores don't reflect that, but right now we can see the scores. RxEO has a 70, pretty much 72%. DAV was an 85, Track Invest with an 88, pretty much. I did retract a few points, kind of going over it a little bit more. And then Neon Exchange, which is coming up pretty soon, and I know a lot of you are hyped up on that. So let's get started. Also, before we begin, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please smash that subscribe button. So I am also doing my coin analysis in a new way. I'm going to go through the website. No more PowerPoint, nothing like that. It was double work and it just did not make sense. So what are we going to cover in my coin analysis? What is ArcSeal? What is their token purpose, their market cap, the prototype, the team and advisors, the competition and their partners, the roadmap, and then we're going to end it all with the pros and cons of the project. So first, what is ArcSeal? It's a platform for trustless and safe security deposit storage on the Ethereum blockchain. It provides decentralized dispute actions between tenants and homeowners. They are tackling a $100 billion problem, which is the security deposits of the rental industry over rental properties. So sometimes leases can be put in a bad situation by a less than reputable homeowner. And these disputes can take weeks to figure out because of human error or red tape. And I'm sure many of you have had horror stories from your friends or neighbors, college students, someone where they just had this huge issue where the, the landowner or homeowner took their deposit claiming something happened. So using this trustless platform, both participants can rest assured that their security deposits will be managed effectively on the Ethereum blockchain. So with smart contracts between the participants, both parties have their voices heard and a deal agreed upon in the beginning to prevent issues later when the tenant slash renter relationship ends. So as an added layer of security, the RxL platform will provide dispute assistance and reward RxL tokens to the arbiter upon resolving these disputes. So now what about the RxL token purpose? So the RxL token is crucial to the RxL platform and ensures flexibility and control over the project's growth. Payments for services, payouts to arbiters, and other interactions with the platform will be exclusively conducted in the RxL token. So now let's check out their token metrics or their market cap. We have a hard cap of, I believe, $26 million, circulating 53 million tokens, total supply of 96 million tokens, and we're looking at about 48 cents per RXL. Their bonuses, as you can see here, we have a pre-sale of 100%, tier 1 is 50%, tier 2 is 20%, tier 3 10%, and 0% for tier 4. All unsold tokens will be burned. And again, the token sale has started. It started today. They have 31,000 Telegram members and the token will show up on exchanges within three months of the ICO date. Now, I know that's a little longer than we like to see, but at least they have a plan and I believe they might have at least one or two exchanges already lined up to throw their token on. I don't know which ones yet. I guess we'll see. So now let's check out their prototype. It's going to be pretty basic, I believe. Let's go look at, at demo. Yeah, here it is. So it's they have a warning up top. It says it provides insight into the operating logic of the ArcSale platform. Again, it looks super basic, but at least they show what's going to be happening behind the scenes, or at least what we should expect. So we have the lease or we have we can add a contract. We can view others that are active in dispute, completed or waiting. Let's click the add new contract. Pretty much basic information you would expect from a contract, how much, 
what it's doing, a description, the title, the lease, etc. Then let's check out an active one. So an active one, someone needs to accept this. They have the Ethereum address where you can send them deposit. What else do we got? The completed, pretty much what we expected. Everything filled out. And then a dispute, same thing. We have a dispute description. We have some arbiters, documents that they can show for proof and then file. So if any photos of like damage for the living room, the kitchen, et cetera. So it's, it's pretty detailed, still pretty basic. Next, let's check out the leasee. Similar to the leaseor, but you cannot create a contract. You can just view it, which is what you would expect. Has the information that has already filled out by the leaseor, I believe. Yeah, so they can accept or reject it. Pretty much seems to be the only difference. They can upload or add documents, waiting, active, and then they have the Ethereum address. Now we have the Arbiter. A little bit different. You can see the Leaseor and the Leasee, what the deposit is, then view. So we can check out what's going on here. What are we wanting to make a decision on? Check out the description. It's not in English, but you can still see the Arbiters. You can check out the proof. So we're able to check out the proof. I don't think you can in the demo. Check out the documents, and then we can vote on which one we are picking. So. At least they have the prototype. It's not the most detailed or beautiful prototype, but it shows what their project is trying to do. And that's the whole point of a prototype, in my opinion. Now let's go to their team. First, let's look at Demetrius. He's their CEO or the co-founder. So he worked for a few big companies, including EY, where he did consulting. And in his summary, he states that he's worked with companies at EY such as L'Oreal, IBM, GE, Accenture, and a few other big ones. Next, we have Alexandris. I think this is how you say his name. He's the co-founder, has experience focusing on web development, where he's co-founder of MNKY Studios, which he worked for seven years. And then our last one, Janice. He's a co-founder, worked at his company called JD Investments, which he specialized in investment management, global macro trading, commodity hedging, and venture capital. So it seems that this group were pretty much founders of smaller companies. Not really any big superstars in my opinion. Let's check out the advisors. So first we have Ganuta. Two, two superstars or two people I think are the best advisors in my opinion. We have Ganuta. She's a member of the Forbes 3430 and a TEDx speaker. Ganuta's background lays in architecture, urbanism, and then urban strategies. And then we have Chris Stapps. I'm not sure how you say his name. He is one of the region's most distinguished brand strategists, having worked with 75 plus brands across Europe. Forbes magazine also recognized him in the 30 for 30 ranking in 2015. So they don't have the best team. They don't have the best advisors, but yeah. Next, let's check out their partners and their competition. So first, let's check out their competition. I went in and I tried to find one or even some, and I couldn't really find anything significant. There are projects operating in similar fields, real estate and the automotive market, and the, but there's none that the team is at least aware that are using the same concept and targeting the rental security deposit specifically. So quoting them, problems in this field do require a blockchain solution as it is the only way to make deposits trustless. In contrast to most blockchain projects, they are looking to cooperate with existing companies instead of disrupting their business. That's a big thing that we talk in cryptocurrency, that the companies are trying to disrupt a whole entire market. This is not what they're trying to do. They're trying to work with businesses. And this is a quote from their Telegram. Next, we look at their partners. So their biggest partner, in my opinion, is Scandiwab. I think that's how you say their name right here. They're pretty, pretty hardcore. They help bring value to blockchain projects like Rockar. They have lots of awards found at the bottom of the page and they've worked with branches like Walmart, Jaguar, New York Times, Happy Socks, and other global brands. And they're also a Google partner. Now, I know that can mean a lot of things, but they still have that there. Outside of that, most of their other partners aren't huge. And this we will talk about in the pros and cons. Next, let's look at their roadmap. So Q1 2018, we're looking at the 
token sale, which is happening today. They have talent outreach, meaning they will hire more people, something that they obviously definitely need. We just saw that. Then they have the beta will be released and testing with limited user base. So they're gonna gather and analyze client feedback and then event marketing. Then we have Q2 2018, we have open beta, full scale marketing, then begin working with legal authorities where security deposits are required, and then RXL tokens listing on exchanges no longer than three months after token sale. So this is in the roadmap, something we like to see. It's a little further than I'd like, still at least they have that on there. Then we have Q3, we have the final release of their platform, and then just more marketing. So it's cool that they have the beta and then the final release within a few months of the token sale. I love that, something that we always look for. I know much, most of us can't stand when a token, number one, doesn't have a prototype, and number two is taking forever to be listed on an exchange and taking forever to release the, the actual platform. We hate that they're not doing this. So what are the pros and cons of this project? First, they have some type of prototype. Although it's basic, it shows how their whole entire system will work. Their market cap is close to that sweet spot of $20 million, and they basically have no competition, at least not yet. They have a very quick roadmap that has a lot of stuff going on in 2018, which we all love to see. And then they do have at least one big partner. So now their cons, they're a pretty unknown ICO. Not many YouTubers have actually talked about this. And they need more big partners. Hopefully that's something that they'll do as soon as possible. And then the team needs to hire top talent, which they do have in their roadmap. That's great to see, but they need someone to help them stand out. The team isn't always everything though. I actually have a few of my biggest people I know that have so so much knowledge they don't really seem to even care most of the time about the team one of the guys is in love with link and we've saw their team so team doesn't always mean everything that's one of their cons that's my video on arcs eel thank you so much for watching i'm going to be checking out xyo network dnn and a few others thanks for watching i'm going to also be checking out xyo network dnn and a bunch of other ones. I would love your suggestions. Come to my Discord, message me on Facebook, comments. Just let me know what you guys think is a great ICO to chart. Don't forget to smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.